So as a luxury content creator, it can often be very, very tempting to sit down and film videos about the latest trending it bag, what is currently in, and this season's latest trends. However, as somebody myself who's become increasingly more, I suppose, minimal, classic in my collection, I wanted to sit down and talk about the handbags in particular that are perhaps more underrated. Perhaps there's not much interest in them, perhaps they're just really under the radar, perhaps they think that they are basic. Whatever the reason might be, I thought I'd sit down today and film the 10 most underrated handbags that I currently see at the moment in this luxury landscape and I want to share them with you just in case you are looking for a new handbag. So it's probably worth me talking just very quickly about the criteria that I have used to, I suppose, define what is an underrated bag. Now, obviously, this can be very subjective. This can go in so many different ways. At least from my perspective, I'm talking about underrated classic looking bags that will endure and stay in your collection for a long time, if not forever. I'm not talking about trend driven bags or seasonal bags. And I'm also, for the most part, at least putting aside resale factor. I know that will be for some a determinant of if something is classic or not. But given that we're talking about underrated bags, ones that are flying a little bit under the radar, they may not have picked up on this resale piece. So we do have 10 separate bags from 10 different fashion houses and I've got them all on my iPad. So I'll include the screen recording as well. So with that all being said, let's go ahead and get started. And we're starting at the top of the alphabet with A and that can only stand for Alexander McQueen. Well, at least in my brain anyway. And I'm sure for some of you, this may be a little bit of a wild card, but hear me out because we have none other than the Alexander McQueen box clutches or the skull clutch. Now I actually used to have this and some of you who have watched my luxury handbag collections in the past will have noticed I had a beautiful silver snakeskin style clutch, but I since sold it because I really wasn't getting much use out of it. That being said, that does not mean my opinion has changed about this particular bag at all. I think it is stunning. I think the style is extremely iconic, quintessentially McQueen. They are just works of art. I think if we just look down here on the screen, that we have such beautiful knuckle clutches and it's immediately identifiable to be from that fashion house. So many different styles, some embellished, some of them a little bit simpler. So you've got some in, you know, sequins and stones, some of them in more exotic skins. There are all kinds of different bags for different budgets, which I really like. And to be honest, even the most expensive ones, like I saw one earlier that was around 6,000 pounds. Now you're seeing an average around 2,000 pounds, 3,000 pounds, they're still cheaper than classic flaps from Chanel, right? Still cheaper than your Birkins and Kellys. This particular red clutch, I think is in a beautiful color. It's got um, Swarovski encrusted rings on it. It even has a shoulder strap, which mine didn't used to have, which I honestly think would have been a game changer. I probably would have kept that bag if it did. But I do believe you will be able to fit your phone. This is on a lambskin material as well. And I think it's absolutely stunning. It's a gorgeous conversation piece. It's a gorgeous piece of art that you can keep even on your shelf when you're not using it. If you were to bring out an Alexander McQueen clutch, that is an absolute showstopper. And I don't feel like enough people are talking about this bag when it comes to evening wear specifically, but I do think it is a brilliant option. The prices are still relatively good. All of the other fashion houses that you are seeing in the same caliber, they have all skyrocketed way faster in price and you get a lot less, I feel, than the beautiful embellishment and detail that you get on a McQueen. And actually, let's just pick another one just for the beauty. Beautiful women's Bosch knuckle clutch in gold. I think for £6,000, which you get the tiniest Chanel, small classic flat, perhaps not even that at that price. I mean, you can get something adorned beautifully in Swarovski crystals, which I think is absolutely stunning. Obviously, the crystals are not everybody's cup of tea. But like I did say earlier, there are simpler designs that are a little bit more, I suppose, low key. So now let's move on to our next handbag and that begins with B and that is for Bulgari. And I'm going to be talking about the Bulgari Serpenty Forever bag. And it's one that I've actually spoken about on my channel a couple of times because I've actually bought my mum a Bulgari Serpenty Forever handbag and it's truly a stunning piece. You have so many colors to choose from, so many different styles, some with top handles, some with just shoulder straps. Some of them look like the Prada Clio, I believe, with just the longer shoulder strap there. 
I personally love this watercolor looking one. I think it's absolutely stunning. And actually, I'm just going to see how much it is. 5,950. That is mad. You could barely get anything from Chanel. That is a full size handbag to fit your phone. Yet you get a beautiful limited edition Serpenty Forever bag and it is in the most beautiful colorway. I think it is absolutely stunning. I've never actually seen this before, but now I'm kind of wanting one myself. And it's a beautiful top handle, metal detail. I love that this top handle version is uh, with detachable with the long strap. You've got such beautiful watercolor looking artwork inside. You also, in fact, with the 70 Forever bags, one of the reasons why I also think it's very special is you get a little mirror inside to touch up your makeup. I think it's beautiful and such a lovely detail. And then I believe for bags of this nature, my mum got one as well, you get a little raincoat for your bag. I think Bulgari has done an amazing job of adding those little finishing touches, which, you know, maybe they don't cost an awful lot for the brand if they're making a mass production, but for the customer, I think adds that little bit more slice of luxury. They come with so much more than you would ever get from the kind of higher tier luxury fashion houses and I think they are real conversation pieces and yet they are still a brand that is able to be purchased online if you do so wish for that convenience and I absolutely love that and I think that alligator one as a side note is just stunning absolutely stunning let's just go on this leather serpenty forever shoulder bag for two thousand pounds or thereabouts you can get a stunning shoulder bag with the iconic snake hardware everybody knows and recognizes the bulgari brand but it's something very classic it's something that you'll wear till you are a lot older as well people often don't think about the long term they only think short term and that's why people go and fall into the trap of trend pieces and you know it pieces but your money is not something that is totally expendable and you want a bag that will stand the test of time especially in a, a beautiful colorway such as this one i think this forest green is absolutely divine i just think it is a beautiful bag for such a steal of a price right now and you're not going to be worrying about every other person wearing your handbag and diluting it because i often find that if someone else or if a lot of people i find are wearing or raving about something that i want the kind of lust for it and the intrigue goes away so i think it's kept very exciting by the fact that not many people have the style of bag. And now I'm kind of considering getting one. So I might, after this video, continue scrolling. Now let's move on to bag number three. And it's actually a bag that I have myself. And the suit amongst you will probably work out that this is a Chanel bag. And we're going to be talking about the Chanel reissue. And I honestly do think that the silhouette inspired a lot of other classic handbags. And obviously since then, Karl Lagerfeld reimagined the reissue bag into the classic flap, which everybody raves about. And yet, you know, this bag, which is the first, has fallen a little bit to the wayside. I don't see as many people talking about or wearing this handbag. However, for the nature of today's video and for those of you out there that want something a little bit more lower key but you do like the brand because it is so classic then i do think that the reissue bag is a fabulous alternative and i do think that the fact that it doesn't have a cc logo which some people like i don't mind it and obviously you're buying the brand let's not lie about it right but some people don't like that and some people also have the safety and security concern i certainly do and so the reissue really solves that problem because not many people know about this classic mademoiselle turn lock mechanism a lot of people just think dc turn lock closure is chanel this can go pretty incognito as well if you're styling it in a pretty minimal way so that's why i absolutely love it and i also think it's underrated because not a lot of people know that you can get fun colorways like the one that i have a lot of people associate the reissue with being granny like or really archaic i genuinely thought that myself until i came across this particular bag and what is so special about it is not just the fact that it's in this beautiful peach colorway and the chevron which is not something that i've seen a lot of in the past from reishi bags but the lining inside is dual tone it is a beautiful electric blue inside now this was a seasonal bag that I bought, so I'm not sure that these will be around, if at all, in the current seasons. But never say never, they always release new ones, so just go online on their website to check it out, or just go on the real resale market. And actually, if we just go into the web page itself, you know, you can see some of the different versions. You've got them in square version now, which I didn't even know about. You can get a square and a more rectangular mini. Let's just go to the so black, given that we are basically on the end of that web page. 
whoa i mean maybe i stand a little bit corrected in terms of the price increases here we've got nine thousand pounds for i suppose a medium sized handbag but look you can always go on the resale market you can always go to a consignment store or you can go to japan as i've raved about many many times but you know if you do want something from chanel and you're willing to put up this price tag then I do want an option out there for people who money is no object, I suppose. And I do think this uh, dark purple crumpled calfskin handbag is a really stunning colorway. So, you know, I'm not just going to rule out these kind of brands just because they're expensive, because by the nature of luxury, things are expensive. And now moving on to our next bag, and I also have this in my possession. We're gonna be talking about the Givenchy Antigona bag. Now I have had my Givenchy Antigona bag for I want to say seven or eight years and it just looks still pretty much brand spanking new which is incredible. This is in the patent leather so maybe that has something to do with it but I've had patent leather bags in other parts of my life especially the most notably the Chanel boy bag and I sold it on because I just did not have a good experience. However Givenchy has great leather craftsmanship and the finishing has been impeccable and I've just not had a single mark or scratch on it and that is one of the prime reasons why I recommend this bag as well as the fact that it's incredibly low price point considering other classic fashion houses and handbags especially for those of you that are a little bit newer to building up your handbag collection. Givenchy has been around for many many years the Antigona bag itself I believe has been around for like a decade at least so you know you can rest assured that this is a handbag that will still be used and loved. They always come out with different sizes and different colorways and hardwares so there's definitely something out there for everybody and so let's just have a quick look on the website a mini Antigona handbag in box leather is 1480 I mean, the prices have gone up, obviously, considerably since I bought mine, which was around 800 or 900 pounds for this small size, which is crazy, right, that this is a small size bag. You know, I still think on the scale of things, relativity in mind, that this is very low for a handbag of this fashion house, of this caliber, and with that much staying power, given its classic silhouette, I think it will always be in style, it will always look classic, and it's quite minimal as well, because you don't have flashy logos in your face, yes you do have a small Givenchy plate, but it is very small in proportion to the rest of the handbag, and you can always just, you know, turn it over, and you would have no idea what brand the bag is, and so let's just scroll down, you can see other mini Givenchy and Togona bags, you can see they've reimagined the mini version into a lock bag so it's a little bit more edgy they also made slouchy versions so you know there is something for everybody here i do think the structured version is the most classic it's the most classy and i think that is the one that i would recommend the most but obviously each to their own the antigona line has many different variations now because it was obviously something that has proven to have been very successful for Givenchy. so if it ain't broke don't fix it and actually, frequently, you can get these Antigona bags, if you're lucky, at places like Bissa Village. Now, I wouldn't usually say that a bag that goes into outlet stores or is discounted is a classic bag. But obviously, it's just not one that people bring out right now because there are so many other trending bags. This bag is still being created. It's still being loved. And so I think that qualifies it. You get so much bag for your money. This is a small bag for, what's it, £1,680 at this stage and yet you can fit so much. This is a very sturdy bag, and this would be a great work bag or travel bag, and obviously you can get the smaller versions. I think they're super cute. Now moving swiftly on to our next bag, and that is by Hermes. And I'm sure a lot of people wonder, hell, why are you recommending Hermes? But hear me out, and we're gonna be talking about the Hermes Constance bag. And seasoned subscribers will now have made many a scathing remark about the famous Birkins and Kelly bags, as well as many other Birkin bake bags. But I do think that I've always had a little bit of a soft spot for the Hermes um, Constance bag, because I do think it is the most, I suppose, classic looking, and it just makes the most sense for the brand. I do think that the Birkins and Kellys are boring. And I do think even for an underrated bag, you want something that has a little bit of intrigue that makes you turn your head a little bit and wonder like what's that bag i do think that the constant does that for me and i do think that it is underrated in the sense that everybody goes on about the aforementioned two bags as opposed to this one and so let's just have a look at some of these styles of bags here you can get them in different sizes different mixtures of colorways 
and materials which i think is quite nice i think the enamel hardware being in different colors is a super fun touch that makes it a little bit more youthful i do think it is in a very classic box shape which a lot of other brands have since imitated not many people i suppose would know that it's a holy grail or very hard to get bag especially if you're in the general public compared to the birkin and kelly so i think that would also make you less of a target perhaps but they've also made different versions which I like of the Constance. So the 124 bag, which I believe has like a little bit wider pocket as well and an, another additional pocket inside perhaps. You've got the Constance mini bags, you've then got the Constance long wallet to go. And I believe they've also made the Constance Elan, which is the longer rectangular version, which I actually think is really nice. And I wouldn't mind actually getting that bag. I know, shock horror, cuff me, send me to prison. As I can't click on any of them sadly, because obviously you can't buy them online and they won't let you know what the prices are but i do believe they're around six or seven thousand pounds depending on the size maybe they're starting at those prices but i think that's very very good especially for this fashion house especially for how exclusive this bag is that also it will create and yield a lot of investment value in the future even if you don't want to use it yourself you will no doubt make back the money that you bought it for if not more it's quite simple looking but elegant classic that can be worn in multiple different ways and is something that you're not going to see everybody out and about. Now let's move on to our next bag and I've actually realised I've never talked about the particular brand that has created this bag before on my channel and that is Lorna. They are actually very well known for being the official, I suppose, handbag creators or designers for the Queen, the late Queen Elizabeth herself and it's no surprise why. And so let's just quickly scroll through the selections here. You've got so many different fun colours, different sizes, and I think the price points are also incredible, given how much bag you get for your money, and if it's good enough for the royal family, and I suppose our taxpayer money, then it's good enough for us. And you can get them in Croc effects, like you see here, for 2,900. You can get them for, uh, you know, different dual tones, like this Kest bag for 2,400. You can get one with a crocodile flap, which is amazing. I love that look. Let's just click on that one for 7,500, which is amazing in terms of the price as well. And a real show stopping piece. And you get so much bag, like I mentioned, for your money. You get a detachable strap. You've got multiple storage options inside. And what is also super special about the Lorna Traviata bag is the fact that you can actually have your own custom bag. There's a page called Customize and you can have your own made to order Traviata bag. And so you just select the styles, material, colors, personalization, you can get your name on it, which is awesome. And then you can order it and I suppose it will take a few months and they do have a heavy backlog. You know, that's to be expected for a bespoke made to order bag, but I do think that is the ultimate in terms of the luxury experience but also something that's truly truly unique and again another real conversation piece because no one else will have a bag quite like yours if you designed it yourself and there's so many other different options for embossings and gold plated tip corners shielding and all of that business and i think that makes it a really enticing option for people who want a classic handbag but don't necessarily preoccupy themselves with those basic big brands. Next up we're going to be talking about another brand beginning with L and that is undoubtedly Louis Vuitton and this is a bag that I've actually had on my wish list for a while and that is the Louis Vuitton Capucines bag. Now this is a very permanent fixture for the fashion house. A lot of the other bags I've noticed have this trapeze shape as well and it seems to work very well. It's got a beautiful top handle which is really elegant, allows for multiple ways to work you've got a very kind of debossed and simplistic looking Louis Vuitton logo so it's not super in your face and you can actually use the flap behind it to actually put in front of the Louis Vuitton and actually it makes it really low key so you don't see the logo at all and you can just see exactly what I mean about the little flap which has the little um, emblem motif for Louis Vuitton which is a little less gaudy and out there which is a good safety feature as well but you can get it in so many different sizes. The Mini, the BB, the MM, and the PM, I believe. And they also make seasonal options as well in different colorways, different uh, hardwares, different materials. I think for, what was it, 5,650 for a, you know, 
small to medium sized bag is a really good option from Louis Vuitton or places. I think it's really great. And the fact they keep reimagining it, re-releasing it is a testament to that fact. And I personally would still consider adding this particular bag to my collection. I'm actually looking at the exotic skin capucine speedy bags so fingers crossed for me but i absolutely think it's stunning so let's talk about our penultimate handbag which i actually do have in my possession or at least the similar kind of style anyway and that's from saint laurent and so i'm going to be talking about the lulu slash envelope style handbags from saint laurent now i've talked about this bag and raved about it many many times before on my channel so i won't labor the point too much but i do think it's in a very classic, simple silhouette that obviously is a similar theme throughout all of these bags that we've talked about today. And I do think it is very well priced. I've never had any quality issues with my handbag and I've had this for maybe three or four years at this stage. And I also think that it is classic enough that, you know, even the fact that Lulu's were really big three or four years ago, people are still wearing this bag. People are still wearing the envelope style Saint Laurent handbag. It's something that honestly gives a Chanel classic wrap type of vibe but for literally a fraction of the price it's a lot more youthful and the designs also show it the multifunctional nature the different textures different hardwares and you can get so many different sizes and so there's just something for everybody you can get this so black style which i think is stunning as well as the lulu and so i think this kind of envelope shape style bag from saint laurent is a winner it's been around for so many years no doubt that they will stay for many years indefinitely to come let's just have a look at this white one here it's 2400 great price point such a big bag as well whoa that's a huge bag maybe a bit too big for me and for every day but for this price point i think there is nothing that you can complain about and i think the fact that you can wear it in multiple different ways is a godsend really and a game changer and now we are on to our final bag number 10 that rounds off this video and it is somewhat of a wild card again i don't think i've spoken about this particular brand before and that is self-portrait now a lot of you will know self-portrait for their ready to wear i definitely eye up a lot of their beautiful dresses as well to add to my collection but bags have never really been on the radar for me at least but this particular bag that i'm looking at known as the bow bag very simplistically is one that i think is a really great option if you just don't want the logo issue at all and you just want a really nice and classic looking bag and i think the bow bag is a really nice style and option to have because all you have is obviously the bow and i think this is the cheapest of all the bags to be quite honest with you so you've got this uh, gray rhinestone mini shoulder bag this one's a little bit more gaudy there are less gaudy options for you but let's just have a look in terms of pricing 400 pounds and you get a nice evening clutch bag which actually looks like it does fit potentially your phone then we can go down and we can try and find a bigger one that is a little bit less gaudy so let's look at this really cute the bow mini pink with diamante details and i think that is such a cute bag i love the trapeze shape super classic against and it's even got feet i think that's super adorable you get it in mock croc as well you can get the white version so it's a little bit more incognito you can get the shoulder strap version so there's so many different ones that you can explore i think super cute a bag like this you could wear anywhere for any event and sometimes brands at least logos anyway aren't always appropriate so i think it's a really great option and something really fun and cute and i would even add this to my collection myself actually if i saw the right one so cheap considering the other options you can often get them on discounts as well so with all that being said those are my 10 picks for the underrated classic handbags if you've got any more suggestions of underrated classic handbags feel free to leave them down below i'd love to hear them i'm sure others will find it very useful as well but i will leave this video here thank you as always for watching and i'll catch you in my next one